Okay, folks, I'm sure you can probably hear the way this camera picks up sound that it's uh, raining and uh, I'm in the shop. And I got in a set of points. These are actually for a uh, McCulloch chainsaw. And I was hoping they'd be smaller, but they're actually bigger. And uh, surprisingly, I probably just went with the wrong chainsaw. Anyway, they was cheap, five dollars and nine cents free shipping, so I'm only out five bucks. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to see if uh, it was possible that it was right. But I ended up going with the Volkswagen points. I have to trim off a little bit on the corner, but I think everything else is good. I'm gonna try to film this thing uh, impulse coupling over because I want to uh, slow it down so I can see, make sure it's making a full rotation to be able to uh, fire our points right. So we're gonna do that real quick. All right, hopefully we can slow that down. It's on film there. We'll be able to tell. So. All right, keep at it. Okay, folks, here's what we've got. Uh, Volkswagen points. Uh, got to shave a little bit off. Still got to drill the hole and put the set in there. But I had done this hole so tight that I could slide them in there and not have any problems. And uh, just to do some testing. What I've done is uh, cleaned up the points. Uh, Put a temporary uh, capacitor on. This is out of a Fairbanks Morse Magneto and uh, until I can get me one that I want to run. And I'm going to either run it in this cover or inside the cover because it's got to be able to hook into that wire. And uh, what I've done is I set my points up. We're almost totally retarded now and uh, on the timing. And not quite, we can go a little ways farther. But I wanted to set it up so the points was in the center of the closed position when this thing was retarded. And the reason I've done that is most of the magnetos or all the magnetos I've seen over the years that are, are not adjustable, that is where it's sitting when the impulse coupler begins and uh, and it actually holds it right there with it closed in the center until it trips and once it trips it comes around and and uh, I guess you know it opens once and then when it closes that all it is is the initial close is what where your sparks at but uh, I've actually uh, got spark on it and I've just got this thing just hung together enough for testing and I wanted to make sure the coil and the, Magnus was good and it's actually throwing a really good spark. It surprised me and I'm going to try to get set up here where you can see it. It may be hard to do but uh, I'm going to do that and then I think I'm going to go ahead and make my cover that goes over the points. Now I'm going to get a new set of points for it. Uh, this is an old rusty set and uh, I'm just going to make sure I make the cover enough to, to come out and clear everything and then uh, We'll uh, make the piece for the spring that holds the cover on and it actually helps hold all this in everything together because this just slides on and uh, but now I've got it pretty tight but I've got it to where you know it'll adjust timing real well okay uh, let me see if I can get you set up where you can see the spark on it here okay folks we're going to try to see if I can show you this thing firing it's gonna be hard to see but I've got a wire running right here and I've got about a 3 16 gap which is pretty daggone wide and uh, way wider than what a spark plug would be. Oh, let me see. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it like that or not. I'm going to try. Oh, 
Hopefully that showed up on there. Try it again. Keep my finger away from it where I don't get shocked. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, working pretty good. I don't think we're going to have any trouble. Uh, like I said, I'm going to change the condenser out. Put a different condenser in it. Something smaller. But uh, we know it'll work. I'll go ahead and get a new set of points. Because like I said, these are rusty. But uh, one thing, I, I kind of had to laugh about this. Uh, doing research on this Magneto online, I, uh, I ran into a lot of people that basically said they're junk. And the reason they said they're junk is because the base is rotted out. And of course, I guess this part, part rotted out. Now, I did have somebody on on uh, on the comments. Uh, the last one, I think, the last video I done said that uh, this was made out of pewter, and it very well could be. I don't, you know, I don't know. And uh, it, it's a pewter type material. I can promise you that. So uh, I wouldn't doubt it. But but anyway, here's the deal. This is uh this is 102 years old, and uh, what I mean, what can you really expect for 102 years? You know, the fact that that base is in good shape tells me that if this is the same material and some of the bases rot out, that you know metallurgy wasn't as up as it is now. So you know there may have may have been some bad batches, and uh, I know this base is absolutely perfect on this one, and then I've seen bases that look like this, so. Uh, but, you know, we're talking about 102 years. How long did they last? How long was this still good? You know, 20, 30, 40 years? Uh, how long could you expect something to last, you know? If it was made out of plastic, uh, it had been in the junkyard a long time ago, or the landfill, really. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't see a problem with it. Uh, you know... I don't see anything American made a hundred years ago. I don't think they made anything that was actually junk. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, if, if they did, uh, I didn't hear about it. But anyway, I'm going to get to making this cap for the top. And I'll show you what I'm going to use. I've got a piece of uh, solid aluminum here. We're going to cut a piece off. And we're going to turn it out. And just to cover, and we'll take our wires back loose until we, you know, we get that covered, and then I'll run a new wire and everything. I didn't run a new one yet, and uh, we'll rewire it to where it, uh, where it'll uh, all be enclosed, and it hopefully look good. We'll see. Uh, I think I can do that out of aluminum, and then polish it out to where it looks like chrome, uh, shiny, instead of uh, leaving it a dull color. That way, it don't look aluminum. It might look maybe a little bit nickel plated or something if we get it shiny enough but uh anyway i'm gonna get at it and i'll show you more okay folks i went through uh, all of my my gears i got or sprockets i've got uh and actually i got more than this i got a lot of some hanging up but anyway went through all of them looking for uh something that was uh double the size of the other if that makes sense uh you know like a 15 and a 30 or a 16 and a 32 so I could get the speed right on the magneto instead of turning it faster. It would make more spark faster, but I don't want, with that uh, old uh, impulse coupler, I really don't want to turn it faster than it's supposed to turn. So anyway, this is number 25 chain. I come up with this, and uh, I don't like it because it's so small. It's actually too small. When I go to put it on that crankshaft, it'd be a, a big pain. And then I found this one, and... Uh, this is 35 chain, and I've got some 35 chain. It's kind of rough, but I can clean it up. It's not. It's actually a new chain, but it's been sitting around. But uh, I think that's what I'm going to use. And uh, not, they're not huge, but uh, this will drive off the crankshaft, and that'll be on the magneto. And I'm still going to have to build something for an outboard bearing on the magneto, so we'll get to that. But I'm going to I'm working on the cap now for the uh, go over the points. So. All right.
Okay, folks. This is two and a half outside, which is what I need. So I don't. I'm just going to polish it and try not to take much off of it. Uh, that two-inch drill bit made pretty quick work of it. Uh, I've still got to turn down, turn it down thinner. Uh, it's going to be pretty thin when I'm done. So I think I'm going to turn it around and do the top part first, and then I'll flip it back around. And uh, this is not critical on size, so we won't uh, we won't have to worry about it. Uh, but we, you know, when you build a part, or the best luck I've had, and don't get me wrong, I'm not a machinist, but the best luck I've had is if you can build the whole part without taking it out of the chuck, that's your best bet. Uh, and if you do have to take it out for some reason, dial indicate it back in real good. But uh, but I'm going to pull this and turn it around. All right, she's getting really thin. She's getting so thin it's starting to scare me here. Uh, and I've got a, let me see, so much more i got to go out. i got about ten thousandths to go, so that's five on each side. Hopefully it'll make it without busting or going to heck. All right, let me get at it. Okay, we got our cap machined out here, and uh, this stands 65,000 walls, so uh, pretty thin. Sticks out pretty far, but if you look at the, uh, the originals, they did too, except they had an opening to get into the points. But uh, as you can see, it fits directly on there. And uh, and I may, I've still got about a quarter inch up here, so I may end up taking some more off and uh, maybe machining some of that down uh, so it don't stick out quite as far. But I mean, it really don't matter. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, anyway, we got our firing, and then uh, we got this cap made, so it needs a lot more sanding and polish work on it. but. But it's there. But uh, I'm afraid to know how late it is. I had a call there a little bit ago in the rain at uh, Highway Patrol call and I ran out and got in and come back and jumped right back in this thing. So uh, I know it's late, so I gotta I gotta get to bed. But uh, but that'll clear our points just fine. Cover it up and uh, we'll put our latch on it to hold everything in and we'll keep rolling with it. Try to get this part finished up. Uh, I've got my, or I found my clay, so I should have it soon, and uh, we will get to uh, get to making that that smelter there. All right, appreciate everybody watching. Bye.